Hi, this is Tony Miller reporting from the U.S. Book Show. I'm here today with the people behind Aloha with Love, both the novel and the movie, which just wrapped shooting in Maui. The movie is based on the story in the novel Aloha with Love by Lindy Miller and Terrence Brody. Brody also wrote the screenplay. Producers include Oren Kamara and Branskem Richmond. Directed by Brian Hertzlinger, and our leading couple is Tiffany Smith and Trevor Donovan. Hello, everyone, and thank you for being here today to talk about this terrific project. I'm going to start with a little information on the writers today. We're going to have those screenwriters going first. Terrence Brody is an active captain in the New York City Fire Department assigned to Ladder 10 in Lower Manhattan. He's the screenwriter of Aloha with Love, as well as prior works, Rescuing Madison, starring Ethan Peck, C. Thomas Howell, and Alona Tall, and A Lesson in Romance, starring Christy Swanson and Scott Grimes. Thanks for joining me, Terry. I really appreciate you taking the time to be here today. It's great to be here. So what gave you the idea um, for Aloha with Love? Uh, I think at the time when I wrote it, I was just watching a lot of HGTV to be quite honest with you, a lot of flipper flop and, uh, and other renovation shows. And uh, I just felt this is a, this is a great vehicle for a romance, you know, and it just, it just kind of popped into my head. I'm, I'm a story person uh, and not that character isn't important to me because of course it is, but, but it's the stories that just kind of pop in my head. You know, and it was those kind of TV shows that were incredibly popular at the time, still actually very popular, uh, that just kind of, you know, jumped in my head. And I said, you know what, there's there's a romance here just just waiting to be written. <laughs> I like that. I like the fact that watching HGTV gave you inspiration yeah. for Aloha. That's that's perfect. Well, um, that's, you know, I had little kids and I just needed very easy viewing at night. So and the next <laughs> I, was, I was just watching it night after night. So that's where it came from. So you have two incredibly different jobs. You're a fireman and a writer. I mean, what interests you in both of these fields? Uh, well, I'll tell you, being a firefighter was just, it's in the, it's in the bloodline. You know, my grandfather, uh, three uncles who are firefighters, um, uh, all in the FDNY. So it was just kind of a rite of passage, you know? I mean, uh, my mom said, okay, it's time to take the test now. And that was it, you know? I mean, I was a bartender and I was always writing, but it came to a point where I said, okay, it's time to get uh, a real job. And I, I have to, but I will say this, 9-11 uh, was my first day in the field. And it was uh, an incredibly, uh, it was a tough day. Obviously it was a tough few months, but I realized how incredibly fulfilling that career path could be. Uh, and of course the brotherhood, I felt right away. Uh, there's a million things to love about the job. Um, and obviously the people I work with, you know, are number one. Uh, it's exciting too. I'll tell you, it gives you a heck of a perspective going to work every day. We don't go to fires every day, but every day we're doing something, whether it's somebody stuck in the elevator on the 50th floor, you know, or an, an overturned car or a simple medical run. At the end of the day or at the end of the 24-hour shift, you, you feel pretty good. You feel like you've done something, you know. And as far, yeah, and as far as the writing goes, I'll always write, you know, because uh, it was something that I just picked up, you know, in, in college around that age. And uh, I've been doing it ever since. And I'll always write. It's just something I have to do a little of uh, every day, something that's just inside. So I understand that you and Lindy are teaming up on another novel and a screenplay. Uh, do you enjoy working with both mediums for story delivery? Yeah, it's great. Uh, I'll be honest with you, though. I read a couple of Lindy's stories, and I realized she's the novelist. Uh, I'm the screenwriter, you know. So, um, yeah, I appreciate, you know, her talent and what she can do. And it's exciting. It's exciting to see my story, you know, in that in that uh, form, you know. So, so, yeah, it's pretty cool, especially considering... I don't do it really all that well. <laughs> you know? 
So Lindy, you are an award-winning author and a professor, as well as founder of Radiant Advisors with clients that range from Warner Brothers to Disney and NBC Universal. You also led the Rutgers Discovery Informatics Institute of Cyberbullying Research Program. That sounds amazing. Um, it must be an author's dream to see you know, this book that you've written come to life on screen. How has this process been for you? Um, you know, for someone who trades in words, it's sometimes really difficult to find the right one. Um, but I think surreal might be, you know, pretty close. Uh, you know, I can't speak for all writers, but I'm a very visual thinker. You know, I come from an analytics background, so it's a lot of see um, and think through things visually. So everything I've ever written, I've already seen, right? It just lives up here in this theater for one with the glitter and the cobwebs and the random bits of trivia that I keep stored up there. Um, so... But to see something that you've created kind of pulled out and given a life of its own and you bring in these amazing, you know, producers and actors and the music and everything and put it together. I mean, it's definitely surreal, um, really, really exciting and, and I mean, incredibly rewarding. So what has it been like for you to watch um, actors be cast in roles that you've written and what did you think of Tiffany and Trevor being cast as Ben and Jenna when it where it's Gemma in the movie? You know, um, I think every writer, or at least me, tends to have a pretty specific image of how their characters look and sound and interact. Um, with each other and the kind of world around them in their book. And I don't tend to write very descriptively in my characters. I like to save description for setting and for place because I want readers to envision, you know, themselves in a character or see a character that's going to be the way that, you know, they really interpret that person. So I didn't do a lot of describing for, for Jenna or Gemma and, and Ben in this role. I kind of had a vague idea, um, but I know exactly what they look like, you know? And when I saw Tiffany and Trevor, I was blown away because they are exactly how these characters look in my head. And, you know, we got a little farther along and now I can't not see Tiffany and Trevor as those characters. And there could not have been a better casting choice. You know, even the book cover, um, has a different couple on the front. And, you know, they're not actually Tiffany and Trevor, but you know, they're not too far off either. And so I think that really speaks to the kind of consolidated vision everyone had for this project and how we all saw the same, you know, the same end result and really pieced that together in a very organic and authentic way. But no, uh, Tiffany and Trevor will forever be my Ben and Jenna. Oh, that's so sweet. So we all know that uh, movie making and things is it's a very small world. Um, you and Trevor have another mutual connection in Sean McNamara, who you've recently finished a novel with, um, writing under another name, Lindy Ryan. Um, I saw that Trevor is also in the Reagan biopic that Sean is currently directing. Um, Trevor, You've starred in everything from 90210 to Hallmark movies to playing a Secret Service agent in the forthcoming Reagan biopic. What do you like about acting in rom-coms? These movies are so much fun. It's 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 so. Uh, Tiffany and I, Tiffany and I got together and went on a hike of about a week prior to leaving to go shoot the film, um, and it was a, and it was upon her suggestion, and it was a perfect thing to kind of start familiar, familiar, since we'd never met, to become familiar with each other. Um, these types of movies, I think, the more familiar and the more chemistry you have off of set and the more that you drive off of set, I think that really translates um, on a screen really, really well. So the real fun part about making these movies is I think a lot of the off-screen off um, time we get to spend together Mm -hmm. and and hang out and create this like cool relationship that we get to then bring in the camera uh, and with that they're they're also very light you can come in and, and and you just have a very enjoyable day so you know you're working 12 to 14 hour days and you get to have a fun time rather than having this grueling <laughs> painful thing we got to hang out in maui and watch you know uh watch the sunset over the ocean and that was our work day so <laughs> it sounds uh, like it it sounds pretty, like it yeah. so what actually drew you to this project aloha with love uh well the script 
I thought the script was fantastic and the story was 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 right on point. I thought it was just it was written so well. I love the fact that they, they uh, knew each other before they grew up together. They dated, you know, and that I had been the, the, the reason that they didn't continue that relationship. And that was a big draw to me is the dynamic between the two and then the resistance when they kind of got back together. I really think that banter we had first run back into each other and you know that residual stuff left behind that we never talked about um, when we split um really drew me to the project um and then of course brian my favorite oh, my favorite baby. director in the world this is our third project <laughs> we got to work on together um and so that was big when we had phone conversations prior to it too and uh, yeah, just just the whole thing, and and Maui wasn't a bad selling point. Either. <laughs> Same. <laughs> so, what was actually your favorite part about playing Ben? Uh, I could connect with Ben in a lot of ways. So, one of my favorite parts of it was what his career choice was. I grew up on job sites. My dad was a general contractor, so I grew up uh, remodeling and doing exactly the stuff we were doing. Uh, um, so that was a big, big draw. And the fact, even though we, we didn't, I didn't get to do any surfing league, or even outside of the movie during the production, um, <laughs> I, uh, I got to reference the fact that he was a surfer. So there was stuff to relate to that as well. So, yeah. So you brought up filming in Maui a couple of times. I bet that was a bonus. What did you do when you weren't on set? Um. <laughs> Remember, Oren is on here. Trevor, Orin <laughs> I know, I'm here. looking right at him. <laughs> Hi, Oren. Uh, I actually did not go surfing. I jumped in the, jumped in the ocean a couple of times, got a bunch of exercise, uh, um, cruised, around the, cruised around the island a little bit, looked around, um, but uh, there, was, there was a lot of long work days. So, yeah, just, uh, just kind of hung out and, and enjoyed paradise. <laughs> I'm starting to get really jealous now. Um, I've heard that you have three rescue dogs and you do some charity work as well. Yeah, um, kind of been in that dog world for a while. I had to put down my German Shepherd two oh, years sorry. ago. It was only um, a couple of years ago uh, from a degenerative disease called degenerative myelopathy. And it's like ALS for dogs. So within six month period, he went from this very, uh, um, energetic, happy, you know, um, active dog to, to being paralyzed in the, in the hind legs. And it's a really difficult thing to watch happen and, and to see the confusion in the dog. So <clears throat> that really got me inspired to sort of bring awareness to it and um, raise money and, and donate doggy wheelchairs to, to dogs that need it. Um, ex-service dogs or dogs that have suffered accidents or um, have had um, DM. Um, so yeah, the dog charity thing has kind of been a big thing. That's, it sounds like a great charity. And because I think it's super important when people take care of their pets like that, even when they have, you know, horrible things happening to them. Um, so it's Tiffany's turn now. So Hi. Tiffany, you played everything from a CIA agent, a CIA agent to a duchess when you were portraying Meghan Markle. Um, in Aloha Love, you're an architect tasked with remodeling a beloved relative's home after her death. How do you bring a little bit of yourself into each of these roles? Um, I think, well, I'm not an architect. And <laughs> this one, it was it actually worked well because she's not supposed to really know how to do a lot of the actual renovating stuff, which I'd never done before. So that was kind of natural, the excitement that I had about getting to do some of that stuff and trying it out for the first time. Um, but I think in this role in particular, like I read it and I loved the fact that she was a strong woman, that she was in this relationship and she saw it wasn't going the way that she wanted it to go. And she was like, I'm not gonna just wait around. I'm gonna make a choice and make a decision and move in this direction. And I think that, yeah, Wendy, um, uh, that like for myself and a bunch of my friends, it, you know, we're 
either single or trying to pursue our careers and figuring out what we want to do with our lives. And so that was something that I could really easily relate to with her and finding that balance of career and doing what you love and family too. That's awesome. So what drew you, drew you to the role in Aloha with Love, uh, Gemma's role? Um, well, I mean, I, I will, I'll put it out there first. Maui was a huge <laughs> draw. Um, I love Hawaii. Um, but yeah, like, like Trevor was saying, I read the script and I just, it was, it was so heartwarming and there was stuff in it that I think struck a chord with me, just like connecting with family, but then it was next level once we got to set and once we got to location and we were interacting with everybody. Um, and like I said, the biggest thing for me was that I loved the fact that she was so strong. Um, cause a lot of times, you know, it's, you don't get to see that version of a woman who is super strong and in charge, but also wants to fall in love and have a relationship and have a career and have a family and have all the things. Um, so that was a really, really big thing. And then I'd actually worked with Oren on a couple other projects a long time ago. I hosted a podcast about Star Wars um, that he worked with me on. I'm a huge nerd. <laughs> <laughs> and then this project came up and I read the script and was just, you know, so excited about it. And again, Maui, how can you say no to Maui, <laughs> especially at the end of the year that we had? Exactly. It would be kind of nice getting away, especially to Maui. I'm starting to really get jealous. Lindy, <laughs> come on. We got to go to Maui. All right. Pack your bags, Tucson. Let's go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany, there's a great scene in the book um, when Jenna or Gemma um, picks up a sledgehammer and goaded by Ben puts it through a wall only for him to tease that it was the act was the wrong wall. Um, it wasn't. Spoiler. Sorry, guys. <laughs> What starts as frustration for Jenna quickly becomes very cathartic and gives her a chance to release some of this tension that she's been holding. Um, what did you actually feel while you were filming that scene? Uh, <laughs> well, Do I want to know? <laughs> <laughs> so we start, we were about to start filming and it was probably a good, I would say like 25, maybe 30 minutes of everyone being like, you're going to hit the wall here hit it here Tiffany yeah. this spot here don't actually hit it swing it don't hit it there but hit it right here this spot and I, like I think that that <laughs> if I'm gonna be really honest part of that frustration of like guys I got it <laughs> came out when I got to actually hit the wall um but yeah well I think to be to be clear we had one wall for her to sledgehammer and true. if we did it the wrong time and the camera's not on it we'd be in trouble True. So, and I just have to all. say, I will, I will totally be the person that's like, I crushed it. I was so proud of myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when did I did it. But, but yeah. yeah, it was, I mean, I think it, there's so much of, of a buildup throughout the year that we've had and just getting to be somewhere. And you can obviously channel all of that into hitting a wall with a sledgehammer. I mean, there's like break rooms where it's just like, literally you just get to break stuff for an hour. Um, so I got to do it a couple of times. I definitely wish I could have done it some more. So I'm like, anybody who's renovating, I'm like, oh, can I come over and just like sledgehammer walls? You're like, I just need, I just want to sledgehammer things. That's yeah. what I want to do now. Just I have to jump the there. Person. I oh, have to tell you, that is a hundred percent my favorite scene in the entire film. Cause I can see Jenna being like, oh my God, <laughs> and just smack at it and then says wrong wall. And she just goes you know, you see it and then you see her release that you know, favorite scene. Well, we definitely got some good slow-mo video and stuff of it as well. Obviously it'll be in the movie, but I'm like holding off on the phone video. I was like, I can't wait to post these. <laughs> <laughs> so Tiffany, I've read you're an avid supporter of ocean uh, conservation and you're a scuba diver. Um, yeah. Did you actually get to go scuba diving in Maui? I didn't, um, like Trevor was saying, the schedule was, it was a lot in a short amount of time to do this. And so, you know, the priority obviously is making sure that I get my rest and that I was ready for every day on set. Um, but also with scuba diving, there's a certain amount of hours between when you fly that you can't dive. Um, so when I first got there, you, I would have had to wait and then we were already filming. And then towards the end, I was so exhausted that I was like, all I wanna do is just lay on the beach. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I definitely, ocean conservation and just environment being good to the environment. I mean, I 
on set, everyone I think made jokes about me because I definitely had the like my reusable water bottle, my reusable <laughs> coffee cup and just trying to keep as much plastics away. And that was, I think there was a moment on set, which was so cool because you're shooting in Maui and you know, everybody in Hawaii is very conscious of the environment. And, you know, there was a piece of plastic that was about to go into the ocean. I was like, ah, can we get that? And everyone was like, yes. Um, so that kind of stuff happening on set too was really cool. Cause you could just tell that, you know, there, everybody wanted to protect the Island as well. Um, so yeah, so I've, I started diving a couple years ago and the first, one of the first times I went diving, I dove the blue hole, which is like, you're not supposed to do those kind of big dives early, but I had a really great instructor and he was like, you're totally ready. I took all the classes that you're supposed to take. So it wasn't anything too crazy. Um, but my favorite dive experience I did, I got to dive in a sunken ship and came up on the beach and actually found an old whiskey bottle that was from the ship from like the 1800s or something. Um, wow. So yeah, it's, it's, it's super meditative and just, it's awesome. I love being in the, in the water. That sounds amazing. So Oren, you're up next. Um, you are the president of Fade to Black Films. Can you tell us more about yourself? Uh, you were the first person to saw the project. You acquired it. What was it about the story that actually kind of caught your attention? Sure. So uh, I'm an independent uh, film and TV producer. Um, you know, we, we knew we were looking for a rom-com. We knew we were actually looking for something different. We wanted something very unique and special. Um, you know, we, we live in a, a, a wonderful time and age right now where there's tons of rom-coms coming out. Um, this channel's dedicated to just rom-coms. Um, and, you know, th there starts to be a, 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 some redundancy after a while. And we knew we wanted something that was going to really be very unique. Um, and that's kind of where our attention shifted to something tropical like a Maui, um, you know, to kind of help the escapism. We also knew we were coming out of um, COVID in the year that everybody had. And that, you know, I think everybody around the world was just like vacation was like number one priority for people. Um, so we had reached out to our good friend, uh, Italia Gandolfo at GH Liter uh, Literary. And um, she recommended uh, a book from uh, Rosewind Books that was gonna be coming out, which was uh, Lindy had been working on. And she introduced us to, uh, to Terrence who had been writing the screenplay. Uh, so we got, a, we got a hold of the screenplay, Probably, I would say within an hour of finishing it, we reached out. We we're like, it's it. We want it. This is the one. Um, and it, it all happened very quickly. It was just all very natural and organic the way it all kind of came to be. Um, you know, there's a little bit of a delay due to the pandemic and what we were dealing with from a production perspective and, you know, traveling that many people to Maui and working under the, the conditions um, you know, safety was a number one priority. So, you know, it, it, we knew it was going to pose a lot of challenges, but it was well worth it once we, we got out there. So we, we, we knew we, we picked the right one. That sounds fantastic. So we heard Tiffany and Trevor talk about filming in Maui. What about, what was it like for you, uh, with your producing partner, Branscombe Richmond? Uh, so Branscombe is, is, is wonderful. He is, um, you know, aside from being just a, a top-notch actor, he's just a, such an amazing human being. And, and he is, is kind of like the ambassador of, of Maui. And it's, you know, for him, it's, it's kind of hand in hand to not only bring production to Maui, but also make sure that the, the mainland productions that are coming to Maui are, are, are showing the proper respect to the island and to the locals. And, you know, you hear stories of so many people going out there and not kind of showing the proper respect. It's, it's a very, very sacred land. Um, the locals take it very seriously. So for us, we knew if we were going to do it, we wanted to do it right, which was kind of why we partnered, <clears throat> excuse me, with Branscombe. Um, and, you know, it was through Branscombe that we were able to make this such a unique experience. Um, uh, a little quick story on our, on our first day of production, we, we knew we wanted to bless the movie going into it. And so <clears throat> we asked Branscombe, you know, if we could do a proper island blessing to kind of have the proper, you know, uh, energy around the movie and to kind of start us off the right right way. And to also just let the local, you know, people know that we were coming there with, with full respect. You know, it's, it's our movie, but it's their land and we wanted to do it the right way. So uh, we were very, very fortunate to have um, a very unique opportunity that the first day of production we had, um, uh, a local 
island priests come down and bless the entire production. The the mayor came down, and it was a it was a very very unique and very spiritual uh, uh, beginning to the movie. So couldn't have asked for a better experience. That sounds that actually sounds really cool um, because it's such a nice way to to show your appreciation for being able to to actually shoot um, in a beautiful location. Absolutely. So I have a quick question. Why was there a name change from Gemma or from Jenna to Gemma um, in the book to the movie? Uh, so we, we uh, in the production, uh, you have to deal with something called clearances, which every script kind of has to go through this, this uh, process of clearances where you basically um, run the script through a process where you look through names and company names and locations and things like that that are actually existing companies or existing people. So if you actually find, like we did, uh, a Jenna Burke who actually happens to live in the place we're shooting the movie, um, you kind of get these little red flags where um, clearance comes back and they're like, hey guys, you got a list of red flags. Um, the same thing actually happened with the name of the architecture firm too, ironically. Um, we had, uh, which, you know, we had gone back and forth with uh, uh, Terrence and Lindy because it was one of those things where you know, who would have guessed that it would be the same name of an actual existing architecture firm. So when those things come up, you know, you have to kind of get creative and make small adjustments like that. So we uh, we also like the the change to Gemma. It just felt like it was a very it was it was it was slightly different, but also a little bit unique. And it kind of gave, um, I think, Tiffany's characters a little bit more uh, islandy uniqueness uh, in a way. That's I like that. I see. I personally like the name Gemma my personal opinion um <laughs> so did trevor have any fun requests while he was in maui that had to wait until the end of filming <laughs> i'm on muting right now <laughs> you're so, you're ready <laughs> yes. so so trevor trevor basically got to maui and i think his very first request was hey you mind if i go surfing and, um, you know, it's, it's essentially a producer's biggest nightmare when your talent wants to go out and start doing risk associated things uh, before cameras even roll. Um, <laughs> not only is it the risk associated, but also from a production perspective, we didn't want to risk him potentially getting sunburn or all of a sudden come to set where one day he's way more tan. <laughs> than before. Um, so I think Charlie, you want to uh, tell him now or no? Like, can we tell that? Can we talk about so, that? Oren, Oren, I have something to tell you. Well, yeah, I got fried. And I got fried with the shipping fault. She didn't, <laughs> you know, I had, didn't have stuff on it. I got fried the day before my the first day of shooting. And I was up all night. I didn't go to bed. I was, I was in my hotel room with a gallon of milk. <clears throat> an aloe vera, aloe vera uh, uh, appointment and putting it on my face and hanging off the bed in my hotel room, pouring whole milk on my face. I had a puddle of whole milk in the carpet in the hotel room and they had to come up and clean up. I stayed up all night and it, it worked out, but, but I thought I was going to listen and I was having a panic attack. I called Brian. That Was it that night or early that morning? It was that night because no early that morning because when you got to brad Skip's place you lifted up your shirt and showed it to me oh yeah my stomach yeah. i was i was fr and yeah. I, yeah i've never felt so stupid in my life but i mean it, and i'm pretty sure so, my immediate anyway. my immediate reaction was don't tell oren and you're <laughs> no. not doing any no shirtless scenes today you're fine so yeah. oren nothing to worry about he was good i uh i appreciate the collusion guys i i really do <laughs> <laughs> well, so Trevor tries to blame me. The day before we went, we're like, let's go to the beach and run our lines, like being good, good little actors. And we're running the lines and he's like, I'm fine. I don't need sunscreen, whatever. So we put it on at first. I did not say that. <laughs> we put it on when you first got there and then you didn't put it on again. And then we left and you're like, no, I'm totally fine. And then I think you text me that night and we're like, oh God. And then we got to set, you were like, I was pouring milk on myself on the couch. I was like, why didn't you do it in the shower? <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, did you tell them to clean the broom? Cause there's going to be like milk all over everywhere. And he's like, oh, I should do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, Hindsight yeah. is twenty twenty. I know. Yes. Yes. Next Especially time. next Yeah, time. with milk. Yeah. But you didn't get burned at all. Like you never looked burned on set. So he did it on the first day and then he was fine. So Thank thankfully he <laughs> he didn't look look that on camera. But it, it was, uh, I think it was, it was a surfing request first, then I think it was snorkeling, and then I think it was base jumping about halfway through. So it, it was a few, a few heart attacks from, from Trevor. <laughs> and I, and I had to constantly be the one to burst the bubble and ask him to wait, but then clearly, you know. Uh... <laughs> Which, and it was great. And I respected that. And I totally understand it because it's also, there's a lot of coral reefs up there. There's a good chance you can get cut open. So I spent a week after production out, stayed out there and bounced around and got my surf surfing in. So it worked out just yeah. well. And got another sunburn <laughs> and got sun blisters and did it all after the production. Good job, pal. <laughs> hey, thanks, buddy. Brian, <laughs> it's yes. your turn. You you are the director. Me. Yes, yes. You. Um, who knew about you know Trevor frying himself <laughs> and not letting Oren know about it. I think everybody's probably pretty happy about that. Um, how is it working with the actors to make the characters come to life in creating this entire world? Oh, it's a blast. It, 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 was a, it, it was a blast. I mean, you know, as Trevor had mentioned, you know, I had worked with Trevor twice before. So I knew exactly what I was getting and I was excited about what I was getting with Trevor. And Branscom I had worked with as well prior um, and knew what I was getting and was so excited about it. Tiffany, I had never worked with. And uh, Oren had and was just raving about her. And, and, and she wound up becoming one of my favorite people. I, I adored working with her and, and seeing all of these wonderful actors bring the characters to life is always a blast when you're, when you're directing. Uh, and and for me, it's it's you know Trevor's really uh, interesting because he 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 has these conversations prior where he really asks the questions about the character and uh, you know to to kind of dictate the path he's going to take with the character and we're always in sync you know with that and uh, you know all the actors came prepared and I think what was great was for me I'm always wanting the less I have to say to an actor about performance, the better. So for, you know, it's that, that's, that just means they've come prepared and they've, you know, they're ready to rock and, and, and their interpretation is what it is. I might adjust the interpretation, but um, you know, so for, for me working with this cast was top notch. I, I, I didn't have to say much, so it was really cool. Um, and, and uh you know, doing it in this tropical paradise was also <laughs> a wonderful. So thanks, Oren. Uh, but uh, it was, yeah, it, it was wonderful. And and I got to work with a lot of local uh, cast that I never had, had worked with before. And it was a blast. Sounds amazing. So Hollywood yeah. has an off and on again relationship with, with rom-coms. Um, mm -hmm. What's your take on how the industry views them today? Uh I think it's, I think it ebbs and flows, right? I, for me, my whole theory is I could count on one hand the number of romantic comedies that are actually amazing. There are a lot of other ones that float around, but like there's one When Harry Met Sally, there's one Notting Hill, there's one Love Actually, right? Mm -hmm. So for, for me, I think it's the hardest genre to pull off and, and have something memorable and have something unique and quotable and, and all that. So, um, I don't know. I think it, I think it ebbs and flows because I, I'm trying to think of the most recent romantic comedy that blew me away. And it takes me a second. Um, but I think, you know, in these types of, you know, projects, you know, I'm always looking for, you know, you know, much like Oren was saying, you know, that there's something has to be unique enough and, 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 and hit check the boxes, which is a thing in the movie, uh, check the boxes and, and hopefully just know that you're going to have a great time and get some really great, you know, scenes out of it and some great, um, you know, there, there are three scenes in this movie that are among the, my favorite that I've ever done. And I think they're very unique, you know, and, and, and there's a magic that comes with it. There's a magic that comes from the writing and the right cast uh, merging and, and, and you get those moments and that's magic to me. 
So, so we had a number of those in the movie and I'm excited for you guys to see it. I'm excited to see it. I've, I'm, I've been hearing about it. I've been re actually reading about it for the last few days. And now I'm like, I must watch this. Um, you've directed a lot of rom-coms and romance films. Um, what interested you in to direct Alo Aloha with Love? Uh, it was the the script, really. I mean, I mean, you know, there's got to be something that I'm going to enjoy when I say yes to a project. Like, I just need to know I'm going to enjoy the process and, you know, get you know have something that's a little different, but still be able to put my fingerprints on it. Mm -hmm. And I love the idea of a renovation. I had never done that before. Uh, and, uh, and, and what comes with that is the challenge of, you know, shooting a renovation of a house in a movie. Uh, and, and, you know, um, because I, as you can imagine, am very handy. I am, you know, I, I think my, my title on the film was sledgehammer consultant, uh, because I was, so, you know, I was relying on, I had my, my production designer who I've worked with a number of times. Um, Jerry Silly and, and Melissa Woods and and I said to Jerry, I'm like, in those scenes, you're gonna be the director. They're gonna, they're gonna, you're telling them exactly what they do with that hammer. And you know, does the nail go in this way or that way? And and I'll be listening, you know. But that was so fun for me. And it was a daunting task to to take a house from have a house have to be in three different stages. One, you know, completely, you know, terrible and disgusting and you know, mold infested and what have you. And then the second is them working on it, you know, in, 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 in mid process. And the third is this beautiful extreme makeover, right? Terry extreme makeover reveal, uh, you know, where the magic is there. So that was, that was a fun challenge. And that's what really got me excited about, about the, the project. Awesome. Well, we are out of questions guys. Thank you. Cool. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Right now I want to know what those three scenes are. <laughs> Same. Uh, <laughs> I'll say this. All of them include you and Trevor. Okay? There you go. <laughs> there you go. If you just said all of them include me, I would say, okay, but I'm in the whole movie. So. <laughs> I, know, I know. I had to make sure Trevor's mentioned. Otherwise, I'm going to get a call from him right now as soon as you hang up. I guarantee it. Thank you. I'm a very sensitive guy. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Terry, where are you a firefighter? Uh, FDNY, Ladder 10. It's Liberty Street, right across from the Freedom Freedom Tower. Very cool. Wow. I'm at, uh, my, my brother, my little brother's uh, engineer and firefighter for Sacramento City. Okay, um, nice. California? Yeah, right. park for 16 years, yeah. Oh, nice. So, okay. Very cool. I have a ton Good. of respect. Uh, nice. Yeah, great. Respect. Absolutely. And and Terry, just based on what we're dealing with right now, thanks for what you do because this is nuts. It's yeah, nuts. It's like been, I'm like been a crazy year. I'm like you know, should I get a box of donuts for the guys? Drop it off on my way out, or what? I mean, this is like nonstop, 24 hours, helicopters dropping, you know, all this stuff, and then you know, this arsonist keeps starting fires over and over again. Oh, so it's yeah. it's it's insane and it's it's gotten over 1300 acres already it's in in, in a day and a half so I, i've Not, got a lot of respect for those for those guys doing the forest fires out there too yeah that's it's crazy yeah. yeah but thank you thank you for what you do and for the script i should also say thank you for the script <laughs> nice to see your your faces and like meet you guys for a second yeah it, do we don't often get to do that when it's like i know a script and so. and Lindy, look at this. I, you know, I've got a book happening. I love this. Hey, can't wait. We're dropped the July 13th. Uh, this is the book release date, so it's right around the bend. Well, I can't wait to see the cover after your little uh comment about them looking like Tiffany and Trevor. I want to see this. Well, you know, it's available on all retailers online, Brian. <laughs> oh, I'm going. <laughs> Bye. That was no, a really good card. You like that? Yeah. No, I like that. You're welcome. Well. You're welcome. <laughs> no, but you know, it's obviously not Ben and, and Tiffany. I'm sorry, Ben and Tiffany. I'm never going to get it right. Tiffany and Trevor on the cover, but you know, it's, it's pretty darn close for having to have done that before we knew, you know, who was going to be the actual sure. actors. And it, like I said, they look amazing on the cover. You guys look amazing um, in the roles. So I think it all, it all worked really well. 
We'll do a Photoshop version with Tiff's and, and Trevor's heads on them. <laughs> Only if it's sunburn, Trevor, though. Oh my God. He, he was never, nervous, though. He would have to be sure. You, you never okay. saw it. You never saw right. it. He timed it out beautifully. Second idea we'll do is shoot with Trevor with a gallon of milk and then we'll send it over to the got milk. That's people. like a whole other, that's a different, different movie. <laughs> different awesome. movie, Lindy, different movie. All right. I'm all right. picturing. I'm picturing the flash dance moment. It's just Trevor with, <laughs> with milk. Uh, it is room, uh, you know. It's just something. Great. I think <laughs> I think I think we're done here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nice to All see right. you guys. Thank Bye, you guys, Lindy. Thank you guys, nice to see everybody. I can't wait to see what the writing duo of Miller and Brody have in store for us next. Shooting a film in Maui sounds like a great time, which will translate to some amazing on-screen chemistry between Tiffany Smith and Trevor Donovan. Producer Oren Kamara and director Brian Herslinger did a great job of making the magic happen. This is Tony Miller signing off from the U.S. Book Show. Lindy, do you have anything you want to say to our listeners? Hi, I'm Lindy Miller, author of Aloha with Love, and you're listening to GeneBookNerd.com.